Hey everybody, Julio DeSanctis here. Welcome to Hodgkin's 2 Electric Boogaloo. I am your slightly droopy-eyed host. Uh, I, I realize I'm looking at myself in the camera here and, uh, you know, I had, it was, we stayed out late a little bit last night and I woke up early and uh, I've been going at it all day with uh, visiting a friend also in the hospital. Um, and uh, I feel like when I get tired, the eye gets especially droopy. And that reminds me, I don't know if I ever told you guys the story of how I did a drive from San Francisco to Los Angeles with a nearly closed droopy eye. So in late June, and if, I, if I've repeated my, if I've told this story before, then I guess I've done too many of these videos and, and I'm just rehashing old material. And I apologize, but you're going to have to sit through it anyway. Uh, in late June, um, when the mass on my neck had really grown and it pressed on the the uh, nerve endings in my jaw and my face was getting Bell's palsy-ish and it was very clear that there was something seriously wrong with me and I contacted my doctor in LA and she was like, well, if you're in San Francisco, just go to a walk-in clinic. I mean, I wouldn't wish a walk-in clinic on my worst enemy. The walk-in clinics are fucking nightmares and I certainly didn't want to start a whole new medical history in San Francisco, when technically Los Angeles is not that far away and I could get to my doctor. So I was just like, you know what? I'm going to drive back down to LA first thing in the morning and get seen. So I wake up early, drive, leave San Francisco. I'm about an hour south of the city, San, San Jose area. And I realized that my left eye is almost completely closed and I'm basically driving one eye. And, uh, you know, that's difficult. It's difficult when you start to totally lose your sight in one eye uh, or your eye is swollen shut or, or closed because of the nerve endings or whatever. So, so I'm freaked out by that. And as a result, I wind up driving the rest of the way, as I'm sure anybody that passed me on the left, I wind up driving like this, like I am just surprised as hell to see you on the road. I, I had my eye, I mean, in my forehead, start, I started to get a headache and my forehead started to hurt because my eyebrows were just up so high and I was trying to see and keep my left eye open. So anyway, that's a side story. That's not the point of today's story. Today's story is on Friday, uh, my wife and I, we spoke to the social worker, um, handling my case at UCLA. And when I hear social worker, I think like, I'm too old to be put into the system. I can't be put up for adoption uh, or foster care or whatever. And and if they tried, I would just run away. I, honestly, I would just run away. So that's what I think social worker. But I guess social workers in general can do all kinds of things. And in UCLA jargon, social workers help handle your cancer case. Um, and they, they do a little bit better job based on who I spoke to a little bit better job than the, uh, schedulers, which oddly enough, the schedulers, uh, argument that I had came up. I was told that I had not been put on the, um, you know, the do not fly list equivalent of cancer care patients, um, that I was able to get treatment that I all was forgiven. And when that was told, when that was said to me, I did really in a lot of ways want to go, it was their fucking fault. But I figured, you know, we gone this far. Uh, they think that I mean my apology. Everybody seems to have moved past it, except they, you know, they can't help but mention it. Um, and, uh, so I didn't say anything. I was just like, Oh, thank goodness. And all I could think is, listen, you're a social worker and you're talking and you're in charge of handling my case. So somewhere or another in the hierarchy of UCLA, you should be above the schedulers, just like my oncologist should be above the schedulers, just like the hospital administrators, I would think were above the schedulers. But apparently in the hierarchy of a hospital, schedulers scare the shit out of everyone, as I found out. Um, anyway. Again, the schedulers are not part of this video. I just keep sidetracking. The, the purpose of this video is the social worker told me that two things. One, even when my treatment is over, it's technically not really over. I don't get to go home. I'll be done after like two and a half weeks um, of the T-cell transfusion, but they won't let me leave the vicinity. I have to... 
I have to stay within 15 minutes of the hospital. And if anybody that knows Los Angeles knows, 15 minutes within the hospital means you're basically still in the same neighborhood, right? So whether you're in Santa Monica or whether you're in Westwood, you can't really make it 15 minutes without, it's just traffic is too bad. It's just too awful in Los Angeles. So I have to stay at a hotel. And on top of that, I have to stay at a hotel with someone with me 24 seven because I could have a medical emergency, right? Because of the, the transfusion. So obviously the obvious choice is my wife. And hey, normally two weeks, the two of us in a hotel, I'm gonna sign up for that. No kid involved. I mean, shit, two weeks, that's where some really, really dirty stuff gets to happen. Uh, but because I'm going to be, you know, post transfusion, I'm not expecting any kind of fun and games. I'm expecting, you know, basically just laying around a hospital. Um, now they do allow for substitutes to my wife. Um, and I have lined up some buddies to help cover. So it's not all chaos. Uh, and my wife driving back and forth from, the West side to the Valley to check in on our daughter and all that stuff. Um, and the good news is if you want to sign up, you don't have to, you're not expected to do the, 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 you're not expected to perform wifely duties. Um, but, and if you want to sign up, sign up in the comments. I don't know. We all have to get vetted by the UCLA, uh, social worker. Um, and maybe she'll report you to home, you know, uh, health and human services. I, I don't know what the whole social worker thing still throws me. But anyway, the other bit of news is that I have a brand new diet. Um, you know how you hear about like antioxidants, keeping away cancer and things like that. I guess that's not the case when you actually have cancer and you go through the T cell transfusion because I can't have any fresh fruits or vegetables at all. Uh, I'm calling this the Jewish deli diet that I am on. I am supposed to only eat things that are 100% cooked to well done. Now, since only a fucking moron would eat a well done steak, I, I'm not going to eat steak. I have to eat things like corned beef or pastrami. I can't even eat, have rare roast beef. So I can have bread. I can have crackers, but I can't have strawberries. Um weird, right? It doesn't make sense to me, but I'll take it for a while. Um, I certainly, anybody that knows me knows that I can, I can take down my share of cured meats. And, uh, when I say that, I'm not talking about the earlier portion when, uh, my wife and I were, and I was talking about my wife and I in the hotel, this is not dirty. This is just cured meats, um, from a Jewish deli. I mean, it's like heaven. It's like, it's like, uh, it's, it's what I would imagine the pearly gates are like. Um, so, so yeah, so two weeks in a hotel, probably not going to be as exciting as a normal two weeks in a hotel and a diet of fully cooked meats and like processed foods, right? So, uh, I can have Pringles, not a banana. I don't know. Either way, I found those two things to be both frustrating and kind of exciting, and not in the normal order, I would think. Um, all right, so that's it for me. Sorry if I just spit. I do have a bad case of dry mouth, also a side effect of chemo. Um, fuck cancer. Keep fighting the good fight. Uh, I Go get a vaccine, and I will be here tomorrow. Love to all. Bye-bye.